Guys, Dustin Hansen. It's a new day. A beautiful sight to wake up to. Got my wiring all laid out. Got the FD out. Skyline. Miata. Miata. Miata's everywhere. Alrighty guys, we went ahead and we cleaned both garages. And we also picked up the DMC crimper tool that we need to crimp these pins on for the cannon plug. So this is a tool you need. I'll give you guys a part number. It doesn't have to be this exact one. There's other ones. Just Google DMC crimper and they'll pop up. Um, the way you use this is you can see here there's a little knob and you move that to the wire gauge that you use. So for us, we're going to move it to 20 because that's what we are crimping. 20 gauge wire. And then you line your pin up in these teeth right here and then squeeze it. And you can see those four teeth come together and they will crimp the wire into the pin um so i think something to look out for when you're doing this or if you're thinking about doing this is you need to locate one of these tools luckily my buddy levi owen has one he seems to have everything that's who i borrowed this from these tools are not cheap they are specialty tools and they run anywhere from three to seven hundred dollars plus so see if your local parts store has one um, if not, be ready to fork up some money or hopefully a buddy of yours has one or maybe even, uh, I don't know if a shop would let you use one, but you definitely want to find this tool because you're going to need it to crimp these pins on. So I got everything all laid out and ready. We're going to basically go ahead and connect all the connectors to all the sensors and we're going to run it through the firewall as if we weren't even using these mil spec, this mil spec connector and plug it all up to the ECU, repin everything. That way we know exactly how much slack we need um, for each wire. And then we can go ahead and mark them at the connector, cut them and pin them. So let's get to it. All right, there you go. So everything is wired up. Um, as you can see, I have all the static interference wiring together with all the grounds that is gonna be going through the one cannon plug and then all the other sensors that are not static sensitive going to the other. Um, so we still have a few more things to wire up. I have aftermarket pressure sensors, um, oil pressure, oil temp. I have water temp, fuel pressure, all that good stuff. So we also have to hook up our electric water pump and that will have its own sensor to know when to turn on as well as um, and my ECU sensor, water temp sensor. So I have an ECU water temp sensor. I have a gauge for the actual little speed hut gauges. And then I have also another gauge on my dash. So I basically have three, four, if you include the ECU water temp sensor. So those will all need to be wired up still, um, as well as the oil pressure, oil temp, and all that kind of stuff. But for now, we are going to get started on all of this stuff. Like I said, take it little by little. That way you don't overwhelm yourself and have a million wires going everywhere. Um, do, do a couple at a time. That way you could pin them and have those mocked up and then just take the cannon plug off and you're good to go. And then you can start on the other ones. So. As you guys can tell, I basically string tied everything. You want all the wire bundles to be pretty tight. You don't want them, you know, a bunch of loops because then it's, I mean, you can, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's not gonna look as clean when you wrap it. You know, you want them all nice and tight so it's a clean wrap. That way everything looks good. And then also you wanna make sure you have everything routed properly. So as you can see, I threw this oil pedestal on, that way I can tell um, where I wanted this wiring. So basically there's a, a bolt right here. We're gonna put an eight off clamp that will hold this wiring right here. That way, that's what it'll look like. It'd be super clean and easy to work with and disconnect everything. So let's get to cutting these and pinning them. Right, so the point of no return has just happened. We went ahead and we cut off the fuel injector wiring. 
This is obviously going to be pinned on the inside, which will go to our connector. And then our ECU connector. And then this side obviously goes to our fuel injectors. So we are going to start pinning these up. Um, like You want to make sure that these are cut pretty close to straight. Otherwise, like I said, there's going to be what if you cut them all at different lengths, some wire is going to have extra slack, which will end up making a big loop like that. And it's just ugly. So make sure you cut them all at the same length. That's why I went a little overboard with a string tie. But the string tie makes sure that everything is completely tight. Like all of this. Like each one got string tied and string tied together and string tied the other ones and on and on and on. So make sure everything is nice and tight. That way when you go to wrap it, it looks like a small, nice wire bundle so let's get to pinning these um also luckily maven performance sent me this little sheet but this is you could tell each wire is labeled inside the connector and this is exactly what you want to do so is what i'll do is oh perfect they already have it wire color stripe color function label so you go through and you label each individual wire and where it sits in each pin. That way, if anything ever happens, you can go back to the sheet and look at what pin does what. Because otherwise, you are you won't have wiring diagrams since you're basically custom building this harness. So make sure you find something, whether you make one, make a chart, it doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be pretty. It just need, You just need to be able to write everything down and where it's all going that way for troubleshooting in the future. If anything crazy happens or you need to rewire it or know what does what, you can go back here and look versus having to retrace all the wires and figure out what pin they go to in the ECU. So this is just a little bit easier to keep track of all your wiring. All right, guys, so I'm gonna show you how to properly pin a connector. Um, you see this little eyelet right here? So this is to see the copper strands. You want your copper strands to be all the way in and touching the bottom also is what you want to do is, is what i do is make sure that you have it cut perfectly so you can line it up like that and you go ahead and you want to cut right there you can cut a little extra but rule of thumb is that you don't want the copper wires hanging out any more than the diameter of the wire just because then it gets weak. Um, this insulation is not only there to protect the wires and make sure that it doesn't um, touch any bare metal and short out or anything, but it's also there for protection. It makes the wires a lot more um, flexible and stiff at the same time. That way it doesn't break off. So you wanna go ahead and mark it. I always just use my thumb, go like that. And then is what I do is you could get wire strippers or you can go ahead and use a razor blade. So basically just very softly go ahead and run around the insulation. You don't want to saw, you just want to push nice and gentle because you don't want to cut any of these copper strands. So you do that and then once you did that, you literally just bend the wire. You can see how it opens up, bend it back one more time, back and forth a little bit. And I put my thumbnail in there and I just pull. And there you go, a perfect cut wire. No strands cut, anything like that. A lot of times if you don't have a good pair of wire strippers, it'll pull and stretch the insulation. I'm also a electrician, so I've been doing this for a while and this by far is the easiest for me. I just carry a razor blade in my wallet and whenever I need to cut some insulation, I just pull it out and go ahead and do exactly what I just showed you. Um, another thing is make sure you have a new razor blade. It is hard if you, this one honestly is used and that was pretty tough. You want a nice clean razor blade so you can just gently push and work your way around. So now you take your pin and you go ahead and put it in. So I don't know if you guys can tell. Yeah, we can, there you go. So you can see the wire strands in there. See, so I pull them out and push them in. And like I said, you're, it's okay if you have a little bit of copper um, strands hanging out. If you want, you can cut them down so it's perfectly flush. But you do want a little bit hanging out. You just don't want, like I said, more than the diameter of the wire. So, so what I could do 
here, I'll take this wire, is put this in the pin, and this is the same size wire, and you can tell that it is about half of that wire. So, here you go. So that is a perfect gripped wire. Um, that is about exactly where you want it, just like that. And now we will go ahead and crimp it on there. So here is the DMC crimpers. Now is what you wanna do is you want to take your wire and pin, put it in and slowly close it until it grabs that pin. So as you can see, I pushed down with my finger and that is so that pin is sitting perfect in there, right? I just took the wire out and now you can see it kind of grabs it. So is what I will do is push this wire in and then just go ahead and apply some pressure, crimp it just like that. So as you can see, it's crimped on. You wanna be able to see that there are the four teeth marks all the way around. And as you can see, pulling this pretty, pretty hard, it is crimped on there nice and tight. So that is exactly how you crimp these pins on. Now, like I said before, the male pin will go on your stationary bulkhead connector, cannon plug, mill spec connector, whatever you want. So that's what you do is you take this insertion tool and you run your wire through it so that the insertion tool is over under this little bevel here. And then you take it and wherever you're pinning it. So I'm going to pin it number three, which would be down this way. Take it, you push it through. And then there it is. Click it. Once it clicks, you just pull it back, take it off. There you go. Both are in. Appearance, Loki, the cat, he's basically a dog. All right, Loki, you fuck. Okay, so how these work is you have your male pin and you have your female pin and they literally, this is on the, the firewall side, so it'll be stationary and this slides over it, if I can get it like that. You can see how hard that was to for me to fit that over there. So that is how it fits and makes that connection there. Just slides right on over it. All right, so this is a shielded wire. This is my trigger wheel setup. Here is the shield that normally runs over top of these wires. So is what you do to keep the shield going through the cam plug. Is you strip it back like this, cut a little bit off. And then you're gonna take another wire. And it's what I do is I fray this wire out. Like this. And you basically, I'm just going to take this wire, fray a little more. And you're going to twist these together this and then pull it back like that and you want to get a solder sleeve like this and pull the solder sleeve over you can see here's that red barrel this is solder so is what you're gonna do is you want these wires the shielding to be 
underneath that barrel. Like so. And then you're gonna take your heat gun, heat this up until the solder melts. And then you will, you'll see this red disappear and you'll be able to tell that the, the solder will melt. And so when you do that, then you cut this, this wire, you pin it and you do the same thing on the other side. So it's almost like a jumper, jumping the shielding together. So this will run through the cannon plug. It'll also get pins. And then the other side of the shielding will look identical like this. And these wires will be connected. So it's like a jumper for the shielding. And that's how you run it through the cannon plug. You guys go, it is fully wired. I have some aftermarket sensors that I'm still waiting on. So we're not gonna wrap this harness up quite yet until I get those connectors and sensors so I know where they go. But all I do is this is a silicone boot. You can get a heat shrink boot, but that's more for like a track car that it will never, it, more like a race pro-am car. So but, to get a, to make it nice and tidy is what I do is you get some cannon plug tape. It's almost like a rubbery tape. And you pull this boot back and you build up a ring around here. And that's what that, that will do is it'll stiffen all these up inside this little um, boot here and then they won't be able to move around in there. They'll move with the boot So do that and then obviously you put your sheathing over it like this and then you tape electrical tape these together So it'll look like that And that will protect it from heat or chafing or anything like that So that is the general idea of how you do a proper mil spec or bulkhead connector cannon plug connector Whatever you want to call it whatever you call it um, wiring harness. It's very simple as long as you take your time. Make sure you label everything. Um, only delete things that are can be deleted. Stay tuned for the next videos. It's gonna be a busy week. We have to paint the NC Miata because I want it looking good. Um, the previous owner actually sideswiped a guardrail at the Nurburgring and so I had to replace the fender, the door, and the rear quarter panel on it. But um, we will be painting it this week and taking it to the grand opening for the Nurburgring. I want to take my Skyline, but vehicle registration's closed and I don't have plates on it, unfortunately, due to this virus. So um, we also will be taking a ride in my neighbor Chris's vehicle. It is not pre-mixed, but it is boosted. He's got some upgraded turbos on it. I know he's already been 180 miles an hour on the unlimited zones on the Autobahn. So we're going to be taking it out for some joy rides once weather's nice. Um, it's supposed to rain this week, so kind of play it by ear, but... Hopefully we'll be taking that out and hitting 200 miles an hour. So stay tuned, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.